go. Uh, just uh, got a chance to recap the weekend and review the film. Obviously disappointed we didn't see more success in our fa in all three phases. Um, you know, we knew we had to play a mistake-free game against te Texas. We thought the game plan was what we needed to do. We just didn't execute it. Had a couple of first game mistakes and in the second quarter that were tough to recover and uh, really got to clean up some of the mental errors that we had in the game. Um, and it was really difficult to recreate their speed in practice. Uh, just they've got great recovery ski speed, very good football team. Um, disappointed with the outcome, but not discouraged. You know, nothing's changed how I feel about our football team and what we can accomplish this season. Um, you know, we're beginning a very important three-game homestand. Uh, we got seven home games this year, and we've got something special going on this week, and I want to talk about it for a second. We're going we're gonna to honor uh, John Mosley, and for those of you that don't know John Mosley, uh, he's a very big part of our CSU history, and we're getting a chance to pay tribute to him this weekend. Uh, probably the highest honor you could give an athlete. Um, we're going to retire his jersey, number 14, over every sport, um, which is very uncommon to happen at any university. Um, John Mosley was the first black football player to letter here uh, at CSU. He earned all-conference honors in both football and wrestling. Uh, he was elected class president both his senior and junior years. Uh, joined the Army Air Corps after graduating from Colorado A&M at the time. Enrolled in Tuskegee Flight Training Program and became one of the first black pilots in U.S. history. Um, his son, Eric, is going to be here this weekend. Uh, and his family, we're very excited to have them back and honored. Uh, he's going to address the team on Friday, and, and we'll, we'll honor John uh, on Saturday. Very appreciative to our administration for making this happen. Um, we're playing Northern Colorado, UNC, this weekend. It's our Ag Day, which is a big tradition here. Um, first of seven home games. And um, really important stand, like I mentioned. Ed Lamb's in his second year there. Um, really, you know, really working hard to get that team to play hard, and they are playing very hard. I think they've made a lot of improvement for a year ago. They lost their first game to Incarnate Word. Uh, but they're a team like us trying to get on track and show great improvement between game one and game two. Uh, they're a multiple offense led by Peter Costelli, a uh, quarterback on offense. Really strong running backs. One of them is Van Shield, who played for us a year ago. And Van's a good, hard player, did a good job for us. We know what he's about. Defense, there are multiple defense. Um, strength of their defense is their linebackers. And they're a team uh, trying to find themselves. And, you know, when you play a team like that, you really got to be strong in, in your core beliefs and what you're doing. And so we're – Hit the practice field today, getting back at it, getting our team ready to roll for this weekend. You talked about, you know, obviously, we're discouraged with what happened last week, but do you still have confidence in this offense that it can be the explosive offense? When you looked at what happened that kept that from happening in Texas, was it more of a you thing, a they thing, or an even split? No, I mean, we felt like we had to play a certain way um, to manage the game and to eat up clock and to keep their home run hitters off the field. It's, it's a very uncomfortable way for us to play, uh, but I felt like we needed to do that uh, to give ourselves an opportunity. Um, you know, we, we didn't execute some things. We had to play a turnover free game and we didn't. We turned the ball over on the punt, which was, which was, was tough to overcome. And like I said, uh, you know, they have a very good team. I mean, they'll probably have 10 draft picks this year, um, this year. And next year they'll probably have 10. And the next year they'll probably have 10. So there's probably 40 kids on their roster that can play in the National Football League. So, I mean, we got to be realistic of what we're playing against. And so, um, you know, we, we, we didn't execute what we did to, to beat this team. Um, I think we're capable of doing that. I do think that this game is going to teach us lessons that are going to help us down the road. And, and we need to take lessons from this and, and, and put it into play for the future. Knowing your penchant for history, what were you were learning about John Mosley? 
What kind of struck you about his life and what he was? No, it's just, um, you know, I don't think any of us really can understand the times that he came up in. And, and uh, you know, with segregation and, and um, uh, you know, it's tough, you know, being the first. I mean, I've had some people in my family that were the first. My dad was the first black athletic director of Michigan State. Um, you know, I've been the first African-American coach at a couple different schools. And so to be first at that time is much different <laughs> than now. Um, but for him to do all the things that he accomplished, he was a unique, incredibly talented individual, you know, um, and, a, and a leader in his own right. And, you know, to be a, a pilot at that time, be one of the first pilots in, in, in World War II, um, and to represent this country the way that he did in this university is pretty amazing. I don't know. Everybody wants to compare. I, I mean, it, to me, it's a loss. A loss is a loss. Um, you know, we we um, um, we're a different team. We're more experienced. We didn't play well Saturday. Um, you know, and they were a different team than Michigan too. You know, Michigan was a more you know more physical, ground oriented team. This was a team with a lot of skilled guys that could run all over the place. So. Regardless, it still counts the same at the end of the day. So, you know, I think uh, we have a lot of season in front of us. We have uh, most all of our goals in front of us. And what really matters is what we do from here on out and how we, how we handle this and, and move forward. You mentioned kind of game plan a little different than, you know, maybe your, your normal one. How do you kind of balance that of uh, wanting to, you know, be true to yourselves, but also, you know, what a game necessarily? Well, you know, you look at every game differently and, and um, you do the things that you feel like you need to do. I mean, we tried to keep their offense off the field. They, had, they have a lot of home run hitters. You give them enough opportunities, you're, you're going to come out on the short end. So we tried to do what we needed to do to do that. We played at a little slower pace. We just didn't execute and finish drives. You talked a lot about wanting to run the ball with more consistency. I think Marshall averaged four and a half yards to carry one over 100. I mean, I think we've got a lot that we can pull from that game, and that's one of them. You know, um, Justin being able to run the football, our offensive line did a lot of good things against a really good defense. Um, you know, they didn't let anybody do that to them last year in the running game. And so we have to build on that. I think as we go, we're trying to build a, a more physical team. We're trying to build a more rugged team that can hold up uh, over a conference season and be able to run the ball when we have to run the ball. Um, and I think we made strides with that Saturday. Um, you know, the final score doesn't look pretty, but we did some good things running the football. I thought I thought Jacob Gardner and Drew Moss and Savion Henderson played a really well. Aaron Karras and, and, and Alex, you know, they were a little bit of a step behind at times. And I thought we saw some, some younger players that hadn't played a game like this just a little bit slow on the trigger. And so they'll learn from that. They'll be better. But I do think we can, we can take some of that, um, you know, growth in the run game uh, with us the rest of the season. I was chatting with Dane Olson. He's been here six years. We counted up. He's had 345 teammates. What have you learned about Dane in your time here? Because I know he's an accountability leader, somebody that your guys respect. Yeah, I mean, I think Dane is a guy that uh, – you know, as a guy that has to earn your way as a walk-on, um, you have to earn respect from everybody, your coaches and teammates every week. And, and Dane's done that. He made some incredible plays on special teams this past week. And he's one of our magnificent seven, you know, our seven core special teams players. And um, so I'm just really proud of Dane. Um, he's a, you know, in this day and age, NIL and all this stuff, there's still place for guys that walk on and earn their way and show that they can play at this level. And, and Dane's done that. You mentioned um, some of the younger guys in the environment that was Texas feeling a step behind. How much does coming home and having that first home game, you feel like build confidence, not just for them, but for the whole team? It's big. I mean, there's certain situations you just can't replicate, you know, as much as you try, um, you know, until you play against a team like that that has the type of athletes it does, 
you really can't can't replicate it with a scout team in practice. So, you know that 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 was that was uh, evident Saturday. Um, but you know we get to come back. I think you know that's a team that's very different than everybody on our schedule. And so we've got a chance to come home, uh, get some home cooking, play in front of our fans. Um, you know, and, and we're going to play a very game uh, UNC team that's hungry to win. So we got to prepare and really get on our our level of preparation every week and go ahead and and try to play our very best every Saturday. And and um, and that's going to be that way regardless of who the opponent is. And that's what what I really want to see our kids do. Jay, when you look at this program has had three straight home games, I think it's been nine years. Is that something that can allow a team to gain a rhythm? And really gain some momentum as the season goes. No, it's important to play at home, and and uh, you know it's important for your kids to get confidence from playing at home. And um, you know I think it's fantastic. We're very fortunate uh, to have three straight home games and to have seven home games. And and uh, you know we want to get we want to get into a rhythm of playing great here. And uh, kids have a lot of confidence. I think we gained a lot of confidence last year playing in Canvas. And so. Um, this is our first opportunity. You know, we got a whole new crop of freshmen that are going to be here. Our band's going to be right behind their home bench. Uh, it'll be a lot different atmosphere, and we're we're excited to see it. I knew it would be a challenge uh, just without Mo Camara from a pass rush standpoint. But how do you feel like those guys fared? Yeah, I was I was really pleased with a couple guys. You know, Gabe Kurtzke played really well for his first game for us, and I'm encouraged by that. Uh, Kenyon Hagers is a freshman. He was not out of place out there. He's running around and and made some really big hits. Um, you know, and I was pleased with Mukende. Um, you know, we have to we have to be a very disciplined pass rush, and we have to play with great relentlessness. And uh, you know, I thought we did some good things. You know, on the on the I thought we had a, a perfect uh, team pass rush on the turnover when when we got the tip and. Um, you know, our, our ends were level rushing. They, they were going speed to power, and we closed up the gaps inside, and that's exactly what we have to do. And I think, you know, in, we are like most every team in America. We are a work in progress. And, you know, we had a lot of guys that were on the field for their first time in a CSU uniform, and, and, um, and they will get better every week, and we need to take another step this week, and we have to do it every week this season. How'd you feel you came out health-wise? Pretty good. You know, I, Justin, you know, had a bunch of carries and against a good physical SEC team. And, um, you know, we had some guys that were beat up a little bit, but nothing unusual for a first game. So we're, we're pretty fortunate right now that, um, that we're in pretty good shape. Jay, I know you've talked in the past you don't believe in, like, a, you, you believe every year has been a proven year for you. But do you feel like this year maybe, Yeah, this is an important homestand for us. It is. We need to play well, and um, and it really it'll really dictate the rest of our season going into conference. But you know, I think we need to we need to get into a groove of playing at a high level and and playing with confidence. And you know, it seems like more more now than in the past. You have so many transfer players that you really don't. You kind of are a work in progress in the preseason, working your chemistry out. And, you know, by the time we get to conference, we really ha ought to have a feel for playing together and playing at a high level. So we just want to gain confidence every week, start, start adding more playmakers into our offense, you know, start playing with more continuity on defense, and, um, and just really get in a groove as a team. And, you know, playing three straight home games helps you do that. Thanks, guys.